and the way it happened, the reason that it happened, um, and how they managed to make that very difficult decision. So could you tell me what year that was? in the 1800s, but I wouldn't know exactly. Let me see if I have a few hope. Sure. Okay. I'll she was born in 19, March 10th, 94. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your mom? No. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. My father, I don't know. Uh, he was in September. He was a year older than her. 93. So mm -hmm. September 1893? Yeah, she was 19. Uh, she was in. There were years apart. Mm -hmm. My mother came over here with a sister to settle here with a sister looking for work. Then my father followed her about a year later when he was a descendant. They went to work in the mills. What year was that? Did they oh, ever do? Do you know how old they were when that happened? Well, you see, she, I have Marley, 3, and she died in 1979. 1979. When did your dad die? I think he died 10 years later. 18, born in 1992, died in 70. 12, 12, Your dad? Mm -hmm. And your mother died in 79, you say? Yeah, she died nine years after. Now, um, were your mother and father married when they came to America? No, no, they get married here. So you don't know how old they were when they came? No, I could find out from my sister, but, yeah. When young people um, decided to leave Portugal, did they have to have special permission to do that? Oh, or? their family, of course. Yeah, they have to have their family. But see, they were, my sister, my my aunt was here, so it was easy for my mother to come here. You know what I mean? Usually there's a family person, you know, she was only 19. So it was easy for her to come. The mother wouldn't have let her come unless her sister was here. Your mom was 19? I believe, yeah. I believe uh, so. mm -hmm. and, and so her sister had already come? My, not my mother's sister, my sister's. My aunt had come. Your mother's sister. Yeah, my mother's sister. Had already come. Well, she yeah, was, she was here about a, a few years. So as soon as they matured, mm -hmm. they left. Yeah, they left. They were 19, 18 and 19, and my father was 19. My mother was 18, my father was 19 when they got married. I have a picture there of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um, what, was the condi what were their living conditions? Yeah. The li living condition was average because they had to go to work. They went to work in the mills. You know, and I mean, when they left Portugal. Oh, they, they were fine. They were good. No. Comfortable. What Comfortable. did your grandfather do for a living? Do you know that? My grandfather. Gee, I don't know. Did he happen to be a fisherman or a farmer? No, he didn't. They were they were house people, but he must have some 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 job. Maybe you can find that out later. Yeah. Um, where in Portugal did did your mother? My grow mother up? came from uh, Graciosa, a sort. The Azores. Yeah, Graciosa, Azores, Azores, Graciosa, G R A C I A, Graciosa, a sort. I guess that, that's the town, which I intend to go there in a couple of months there. Now you're going to go in a couple now of months? April, if I can, yeah, make it. Gosh, that's wonderful. Yeah. So my mother and father came from that same town, the Silva. I saw it. That's a town. And he's always, <coughs> it's like uh, Boston is the capital. So they're... Um, they came here as immigrants. They landed in the uh, Ellis, uh, <coughs> Ellis Island. I couldn't give you the dates. I'd have to find out. Did your My mother has everything right now. Did your mother know your father when they came yes, here? Yes, because they get married here a year after. They get married. So, <coughs> so their plan was to come and, and get married. Yes, and get a job and get married. Yeah. Did they know before they came that they were going to enter the mills for work? I'm sure they did. 
Uh, that's all there was here at that time. Yeah, that's what brought a lot of people. There was nothing, nothing but the um, yeah, MSG, you know, not the MSG, the MSG the dementia, which my father worked there. But I always came in here to this country to work in the mill. Do you know anything about the way they came here? Did they come on a boat? Yes, on a boat. Oh, yeah. And did you ever hear anything about that voyage? Mm -hmm. Maybe my sister would know. I can ask her because my po folks live with her all the time. You know what I mean? So she would know, be closer to that, you know. Would that be Mary? Yeah. Yeah. See, they lived with her until they died, so she mm -hmm. knows more or less everything about yeah. them. And they probably told a lot of stories yeah. over the years. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm that's what I'm hoping yeah. that you might remember some of the stories. I'm, I remember them coming here and I lived up in a boarding house up on Tyler Street. Sixteen Tyler Street. And my folks were there it's like a boarding house. Everybody that's single or everybody that doesn't can't afford a house goes into that house and they have one cook and everybody, you know, has a room and, and that's it, they call the boarding house. And my folks came there and my, my father was in one boarding house, my mother was another because of old fashioned people. They don't want them to live together until they get married. Mm -hmm. They were very strict, mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> but they did get married a year later, yeah. 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 One year later. And they, and they were in, in uh, both mills out, whatever the mills they had. Do you remember um, after they got married, where did they live? They lived in a, in a boarding house until they found a place and a tenement. Were they, uh, it turned, for them, because it was an apartment, it was then called a tenement and not a Yeah, apartment. a tenement, yeah. And do you know mm -hmm. where that was? That was in down, downtown bar, Lowell. Let's say near the opera house, you know, where well, you don't know the opera no, house. No, but I know, I know the location. <coughs> the opera house of the Drugstore, right? There. Right. They lived right in that area, Elm Street. Oh, okay. Elm Street, because mm -hmm. that's where I was born. Mm -hmm. I was born right there in Elm Street. Mm -hmm. um, so that was in the middle of the Portuguese neighborhood then. Oh yeah. Mm. Back Central. Yeah. Back Central. Oh. Um, and do you remember anything about your childhood? Well, I know my mother was very strict. <laughs> that's all I can say. She was really strict, and I remember when I went to, um, no, we were playing outside, and my, I, this man comes around with a, a horse, and I sat on it. Oh, she thought that was terrible, that was so immoral, <laughs> to sit on a horse. And I, was side, we, I sat on a horse sideways, but she thought, she was, they were very strict. They were brought up there. Oh, the old days, oh, yeah. yeah. How many brothers and sisters did you have? I have two sisters and a brother. And uh, who, who, what was the order of birth? Well, I was the oldest, and then my sister, my other sister, and then Johnny. Um, and was your brother treated any differently than you and your sisters? No, he was spoiled by us, but he, he was, you know, he was a good kid. Was said. your father strict? Oh, Portuguese people were so strict. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they were then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could not, no, I get married. I had my sisters had to sit there in their living room right next to me. I could only see my mother and father, uh, my boyfriend twice a week. And and you had to be timed. They used to sit and time us to see, well, you come Wednesday, you come Sunday. That's it. Mm -hmm. it was so you were courting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You you had, um, I had my two, my sister was a little younger. So she to she didn't want to, but my mother. She chaperoned you. Yeah, isn't that? That's the old-fashioned way today. It's nothing. Mm. It's very. There should be a little bit more of that. Not quite to that extent. They were good parents, but mm. my mother was strict. The house had to be clean. Everything had to be just so before we went to church. We come from church. I help my mother fry eggs and bacon and linguisa for breakfast, which you buy. You know, I don't do that now. No. I eat oatmeal. And sure, you know, but they did. That have, day, they did. They did. And nothing happened to them. They were so strong-willed, and that was it. Mm. Then I went to live on Rock Street. I went to, got married in Manchester. Man yeah. uh, New Hampshire? New Hampshire, yeah. yeah. Um, well, Amina, what do you remember, um, if anything, about your parents' uh, 
socializing with other ethnic groups. Were there any problems that you remember hearing about? No. No, because they used to go to dances. My father was a musician, so he used to play in the band. So my mother would go. She'd sit with us, you know. But that was all. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did they play primarily for Portuguese, with, you know, yeah, functions yeah, yeah. and yeah. stuff? They didn't. Functions. Yeah. When they went on Sunday, if they could get a, a truck, the women go in a truck and the men would drive it, and they'd go on the shores and get fish. And the woman would be cooking, you know, chicken in case, mm -hmm. uh, like a cacciatore, they'd be cooking chicken. And the husband, they would go on fish. If they caught fish, the lady would be waiting to fry it when they got in. It was on mm -hmm. a truck. They didn't have wow. cars enough. But they did it more in Portuguese communities. Yes. Like this, was a, this was a social function that was for the fishermen to return. Function, yeah. And how often did that happen? Well, I don't know. Was it a weekly week. event? No, no. I think maybe when they were, they wanted to get away from the house and do something. That was their yeah. style like of going, picnic for of going and yeah. picnic. That's it, because it was cheaper. Right. And not everybody had cars then. Yeah. Maybe one person had a car and it was a truck. And they didn't eat in restaurants. They no. all ate at home. No. And I remember no. living on Tyler Street, my mother going out, and this man would come up and um, sell all kinds of uh, clothes and everything. We used to call them Happy Days. And then they, another man used to come up and sell meat on the truck. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't even refrigeration. Yeah. And sell chunks of meat. You know, they'd kill a cow and they'd sell chunks right. of meat. Because they didn't have a lot of refrigeration over in Portugal, no, no. so they were very no. accustomed Did to Did you that. remember uh, such things as an ice man coming back? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, I remember. Mother, yeah, they had an old ice box at the top of the open, at the top of the ice yeah. yeah. And the big pad. And that was like another, not a daily, it was maybe every two weeks, no, every two days or three days. Yeah. Fifteen cents for a piece of ice. Mm -hmm. um, some of the things I've read about working in the mill, um, make me think that the ethnic groups separated themselves from each other, that they had to fraternize and be sociable while they were working, but after work it, w it wasn't, um... Well, no, because those people, you know, my, like my mother, she, they had a boarding house, but she used to go down the stove, one stove for the whole house, and they had to, like, sort of, have you come and cook today, and she'll come and cook an hour later, you know what I mean? It was like, but you couldn't be in somebody else's way. There was they had an agreement mm -hmm. that you cook so it was a at seven o'clock, and I cook at eight. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. And it was my godmother that actually they had the house. Yeah, my godmother. Yeah. And what was her name? I mean, it was uh, uh, what was her name? Ant Ant Antonia. Antonia. Mm -hmm. Antonia. Now was she a relative or just a friend of oh, no, the family? Oh no, she was she was, was, was my godmother because she. When they baptized my, myself, she was the one that was there. Right. We what house, house is it that your godmother owned? On the, on the Not the boarding house. house. My godmother, yeah, she was there. She owned but, the boarding but, um, house. She didn't own, I don't know if she owned it. I know everybody she, lived there. Forever was there. My, like a family thing. You know, everybody was so sociable. But they, I didn't, never found them to be argumentative or anything like mm. that. You know. But it was basically well, they Portuguese, were all Portuguese families. Portuguese. That, oh, and yeah. I think it was sort of relatives, like right. Now they had to be was, sponsored back then, didn't they? To come, somebody had to be here to accept them. Yeah, there was that. It, it wasn't was, just Angelina, traveling Angelina, into the Angelina, country. Angelina. Everyone came over and was sponsored. You know, they had to have a sponsor here in America to get oh, them. Oh yeah, I, I had. A, a, I was a sponsor to a, a lady, uh, an aunt. Well, we say it was an aunt, but it came over with her husband five children back Central Street. There's still one of them or two is still there. Yeah. And um, I spawned with them. I was afraid because they told me if um, they were here and they didn't go to work and went on welfare, I would lose my house. So, but it was my married. mother. My mother beg begged me to have her friend. Well, it's sort of distant. Everybody's right. a relative in sure. Portugal. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Everybody's a relative. Yeah. Cousin. Yeah. Yeah. Kids yeah. What I um, what I'm wondering about was if you had um, strict parenting and you had a lot of chores, what did you do for fun as children? You went to school. Went to school. That's right. On, on Tyler Street, and then I used to go with friends, and I loved to dance. 
know, and my my, uh, my friends are all we were the freighters, we the freighters people, and we used to go to school and come home and just do our homework and just stay around and play with them. And I, my mother, I was the only child till I was eleven, so I was spoiled. I had everything, you know. You have everything. You're rich, you know. I was rich considered yeah. by the other kids, and I used to give them all the ribbons for my hair, throw them out the window. Because I had too many, I didn't like my, I didn't like wearing them. I said, oh, my mother would be looking for them, and she'd say, well, yeah, I thought you had a yellow ribbon. And she'd no. Oh, no, Ma, I don't know where it is. I'd give it away. You'd sit to your mom. Them. I, I'd <laughs> throw out the window. <laughs> what other, uh, how did you do in school, Romina? Yeah, good, good. Now, what school did you go to? I went to Batma, and I went to another school. I don't remember. I know Butler School. Mm. Yeah. Would it have been the Maury up in that area back? No, no. No, because no, from well, I was about eleven or twelve when I went to Manchester. My father found a work oh. in Manchester in the mills, so we had all pack and leave. Oh, I see. You know, so I went to Manchester. I, I went to Shaw School, Shaw Street School. Oh. You lived in Manchester, New Hampshire, mm -hmm. for how long? Many years. I'd say about well, eleven years. Mm -hmm. So all of your siblings were born in New Hampshire? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I got married there. Now, um, why did your father leave Long Island? Look for work. So what year would this have been then? It would have been 1924. Possibly, yeah, about that. Well, so the point I mean was, but, right, if you were born in 1914, yeah. and you lived in Lowell for a while yeah. before you moved? up into New Hampshire? Yeah. Yeah, we lived on Rock Street. I remember that. Mm. How did you um, meet your husband? The first husband? Yes. Yeah. Um, let's see how I met him. Oh, he used to come. He, he, my father didn't know how to drive. He wanted to buy a car. Mm -hmm. So my father bought a car, and my husband then used to show every Sunday, take us to church, and show him how to drive. That was the idea. Then I met him that way. I used to cook for him morning breakfast, Sunday morning. So there was a friend of the pork chops or yeah. linguine. You don't do that now, no. but that's what they no, did then. Did yeah. you have to have formal courting as well? Oh, definitely. Oh, God, my folks were, they were strict right till the day I got married. Yeah. They didn't, I don't know if they said they didn't trust it, but that, they trusted me, but that was their style. You know they were I mean? proud people, don't you yeah. think? Oh. They didn't, I think they My just father. didn't want, you know, they were just very yeah. proud. Protective. protective. Yeah, protective. Because mm -hmm. yeah, my father used to work in the mills and I'd make, he'd sit down and make me read the Portuguese paper on Sunday so I could learn how to read Portuguese. But he was educated. He mm -hmm. knew all the manners of, of table, of things like that. He self-educated, person interesting, in, you know, how he, he felt about it. They worked in the mills, that they were proud and educated people. My mother learned how to read English in and, and, and a few short times. She was so proud to be in America. She learned how to read English. Mm -hmm. She forced herself to do it. You know? mm -hmm. she, when she died, God bless her, she could, you know, she could talk just like anybody else. Mm -hmm. How long uh, did you, do you think it took her to learn English? You know, I'd say, see, they work in the mills. I'd say like two years. So, um, do you know how they did that? Did they sit in groups and help each No, other? they just listened. My folks were very, they wanted to learn so bad, they'd listen to anybody that talked English. And if they got a paper like this, they, they'd try and read it. And if they didn't know the name, they'd find out, they'd look what it was. Yeah. My father was very, you know, he loved to be educated. And I figured that my children all went to college and all had that background because of my ancestors. So, so it was um, a compliment for them to be mm -hmm. in America. They didn't yes. feel that they were being oppressed in any way. No, they were proud of whatever they did. But that's all they had. There was the mills. There was no, you know, mm -hmm. they didn't go to college, but they had. They were proud of what they did themselves. Um, I'd like to go back and ask you how you think that attitude was formed. Did you ever hear any stories about your grandparents? No. My grandparents somehow, they were very old. I don't say they're old, but they died very young. Did you ever meet them? No. 
never met him. I never, so, I never knew any grandparent in my life because they stayed there and they died there. But, but they must have been very encouraging people. Oh, yeah, so they encouraged my father and my mother, but was it just to the intention that my father had to marry my mother. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He was strict to that. And when my mother came here, she had a sister here, so that's why they loved to go. But they got married, trust my master. What was her sister's name? Pardon? What was her sister's name when she came to live with her sister? What was her sister? Maria. Maria? Yeah, Maria. Maria. Yeah. They were very uh, good parents, but they had their strict ways of dealing with us. Mm -hmm. they, they, they just thought that was important. And they were very conscious of, um, you know, dealing with people, and they loved to study. They liked to go get ahead. Let me ask you this question, and you certainly don't have to answer it if you don't want to. Um, when someone in your family misbehaved, mm -hmm. what was your discipline? Oh, I don't know. I think my father used to go, you know, he'd find out what was wrong, and he'd get down to the bottom of it. But we didn't have anybody. Actually, my, my two sisters and I, they were strict with them, not as much. And then my brother came. And even my father was strict with my brother because he said, don't you go out with girls that have, have painted lips. Lipstick, you know. <laughs> that's one of the things he was strict, you know, yeah. I mean, he, he was strict because he wanted his family to be good. Respectable. Yeah. Respectable, yeah. Mm -hmm. He didn't like my, my sister-in-law now which is my brother's wife, my sister. She always thinks of that. She says, when I used to go see Paul Lee, she said, I, I was always afraid to put lipstick, because I know he didn't like it. He thought that they used to call the girls of the street that used to make up yeah. too much, you know? So much they, were, they had a, a real cultured feeling that we should be the same, you know? Right. Now, was the culture the same over there for loose women? Do you feel, I know, in, Oh, mm -hmm. and over there, well, over there, what they do is they have one street just for prostitutes. Right, that's what I have thought. Yeah. yeah. So they're well aware of what that was when they yeah. came over here. So they oh, just yeah. didn't well, want their children to they, fall. They, they just right yeah. They were strict with my brother, strict with all of us. But yeah. It wasn't as strict as you hated them. It wasn't some, something that you didn't like. It was just something to keep the family together. Careful. Yeah. Moral. Keep the family that, together. Yes. Yeah. Um, so what I've understood so far is that essentially it was an extended family. No matter how many families were connected, everybody was related. And so there was actually no need or desire to go outside the family no. for entertainment or mm -hmm. marriage partners. Um, and did a lot of these social events happen through the church? Well, I remember my my mother used to put me in all the uh, processions, you know, and she'd always dress me up. That I couldn't say no. She had we had to do it. Mm -hmm. They had they had strict rules. My whole family, my mother, put us in church, and you know we followed the rules of the church. Mm -hmm. What is a procession? A procession is like when they have a feast. And the children march in the feast, and you get dressed up. Well, if you made your first communion, you dressed up. First communion. And if you didn't, then you'd have a dress. I'd like to make a procession is like um, a parade, only a different word. Church is a procession, parade is out, you know, out in the street. Now, <clears throat> how did a lot of the new country rules and morals affect your community? In other words, did the Portuguese community maintain its morals and standards just as they had been in the old country or or were people inclined to be a little bit flexible as time they were inclined after they here a few years as i know see my i couldn't go dancing with my husband no no, no. i couldn't i had no freedom but my sister during the war they used to belong to the uso and they used to go dancing the two of them they'd take a bus and go dancing at the uh, they call it the, the place where they, the soldiers were like Fort Devon, and it, right. but I couldn't do that at my time because I was a ten years different. You know? right. But my my true. folks really did let go a little bit. They, How do that. you think that might have happened? How do you well, think? Well, because 
you know, when, when their parents, like me, if I had two children, and I'd say, well, go ahead, girls, you know, you, you help each other, you know, go companionship, right? Mm -hmm. And they trust them. But, you know, that was the story. Mm -hmm. You know, two is better than one, because you would watch her, and, and I'd be, you know, when I was alone, they wouldn't let me go alone. But that was the, the ways of protecting you. Right. That was the protection. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about the mill. Um, when you heard your parents talking about their mill experience, did, were any of those experiences negative? Did they feel that they were working um, a reasonable amount of time for the money that they earned? Were they overworked? Were their supervisors kind or overbearing? Do you remember that? I know my my folks talking they were overworked. And it was a dirty job. And they were always looking for better, for better. My father didn't want to be a uh, thing. He, he chose to be a loom fixer, which is a higher grade of, of um, in the mills, because he would fix the looms. So he was a little more superior. But when you're just there working on the looms like um, Cards, you know, they call it, sh and the sh they have to be spindled there. My mother, my mother did that. It was dirty, it was dirty. She took them home and she could be tired. And they worked long hours, 54 hours, not like now. When they had children, your mother was still working? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did she always work? Yeah, but I, uh, no, then, then she came home because after the three children after me, she had to stay home. Yeah, but my father worked. He used to play in a band on weekends to make extra money. Yeah, they had an orchestra. And then he'd play, he'd be in the mills. He had two jobs. On weekends, he always would work. Because he didn't want my, my mother couldn't go to work. She had those three children. You know. Do you recall um, any health problems that your mom or father might have had? From health problems? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they didn't miss much work. No. My father, he traveled, he came, went to Manchester for a job, then that, that Amnesty closed down, then he went to Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania? Pennsylvania to work, yeah. And travel back and forth? And travel. He used to stay there like a week, and then he'd come home. Yeah. So when you were 11, you went to Manchester to the mills, mm -hmm. and then those mills closed down as well, and he had to mm -hmm. go to Connecticut. And went slack, you know, and they had. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was working, I my I went in the middle of working. My father says I went in a, doing school vacation, right? So we I went there and oh, I was so disgusted with all the dirty cotton. I cried one night, and my father said, "Well, go another night." So I went night. Said, "Dad, I can't do it." So he said, "I'm going to get you an office job." I was 14. He got me an office job, and I worked since then. I've been in office work. Oh my God! Since then, I never. He got me like, you know, uh, in a shipping room, you know, having invoices and everything. And I, I was so tickled pink. I wasn't in that dirty old wee, wee room. <laughs> and I've been in the office ever since. I went to school here. I went to um, Macintosh. I went to the commercial college. Even with my children, my husband reminded me, and I said, I got to do better, and I did. I became an accountant, and that was. An improvement over the mill work. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you all have this desire to, better. to excel. Yeah. To better themselves. Yeah, mm -hmm. better than and that's encouraged. Yeah. Um, I get the feeling that that in, that you you all as children received the encouragement of your parents positively. In other words, you didn't feel that you were being criticized, but no, rather that you no, were being no. allowed to get better. No, my father always thought we should do better. My children, I mean, I have three children who all went to college, and I, I encouraged them. I said, you want to go work in a mill? So my son went to work in a mill, one of the teacher now, and, you know, he's in one of those heavy trucks went over his foot, and he lost one of the toes. Then he realized that I was right, but I didn't push him. I just said, look, you work in the mills, that's what your grandfather did, you're going to do that the rest of your life. And I said, the jobs that we're turning down south, you won't have a job. So he went to a foot doctor, and he was, uh, what do you call it, uh, was Jewish. 
And he said, gee, where are you working? He said, oh, I'm working in the mills. He said, oh, man. He said, man. He said, get out of there. He said, go do something better. So we went and took a test at the Lowell, uh, high, Lowell uh, Textile, and she passed with eight in his class. And that's how he succeeded to be a teacher. I, I, my children, all my other ones, we the consultants and we were medical, my daughter's a nurse, they all sort of had the same as my father did, go get pet. Yeah. Did they each, um, did they each try the lesser job first? Well, this instance of my son, yes. But not the other two. Not the other two. Where, well, my son was going to school and he got a job in, in working in a drugstore. Like the Ballard of Drugstore, which used to be on Chensford Street. He started there about, well, my son went there with part time, got his brother in, and then they both worked there until my, they got married. Um, what kind of parents were you in comparison to your own parents? Well, I wasn't that strict, but as my, you know, as a parent, but I watched them, you know. I wanted them to better themselves. And did you and your husband work as a unit? I mean, were, were, oh, you, yeah. were you pretty... Uh, no. And compared to other Portuguese parents, were you similar, do you think? No, I always... I was like... I was, like I say, I was brought up... My father always encouraged us to do better, you know, get higher marks, and try to be a little better than the next person. But we weren't actually fighting with anybody, but that was his idea and encouraged us. Yeah. Yeah. And when you met your husband, um, d did you feel from the beginning that that was going to be your life's partner? Yes. That that was your choice? Mm -hmm. No one... Because I worked in the office in Mammoth's gig there, and he used to work in the Weevil. Mm -hmm. My husband worked in the Weevil. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of immigration, Wilhelmina, how... Um, how do you compare the old immigration with the new immigration? No. Mm -hmm. so, well, now they have a lot more opportunities. Then they they all landed in them now. You know, the people. There was no other other jobs but no work, nothing. They did was in Manchester or in Lowell. But now the mills are going down south now, so you don't have many mills now. Even shoe shops were very common in those days. I worked in a shoe shop office for 11 years, Lobby Shoe. Yeah. That's how I went to school, and my boss used to encourage me. He said, "Yeah, go to school." He said, "Do a little better." And I, I did. My kids the same way. So education is extremely important. Yeah, to our family. Yeah, family. Do you and, do you feel that was the case with most Portuguese families coming no, over? No, no, because I think that most of them, the Portuguese families, I don't say the most. I should say maybe fifty percent. Uh, money mad. Mm -hmm. They just want the kids to go to work and get money. They're very hard workers. They're like hard workers. I've never seen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because I know, I worked in the yeah. Roman shoe office right. and I used to see what they used to be there. Mm -hmm. But they, they would just, you make $50 next, this week, next week you have to make 55 you know. Right. And that was a common. This was family expectation? Yeah. Uh, but no, they're, they're not people no, that want that to be educated. They just want money. Yeah. Yes. Um, but my question is, the families expected their children to make a certain income and contribute to the family In income? In the family, yeah. But you did not have those expectations? No. My, my folks are liberal in that sense. They just wanted us to better ourselves, mm -hmm. to do better. And today, um, I know that, that you have um, Portuguese that weren't just from um, the Azores or the islands, some from no. Portugal, I mean, some Brazil. Oh, yeah, I have a uh, brother-in-law in Brazil. Yeah. I've been there a couple of times. I recall you were saying that when the early immigrants came here, um, it was really just like going to visit relatives, that there was always someone here Friendly. to receive them. Mm -hmm. How do you compare that with today? Today? No, people today, I'll tell you, they're very independent very, very much independent. Uh, there are a few that you might point to want to be educated, but they're independent in themselves. They think going to work in the mills is money. They don't think of their 
you know, what is going to happen 10 years from then, you know, the more greedy that's it. And so some, some business people, Portuguese people, like um, Fernanda, you know, the girl there. Mm -hmm. And she's a, a smart little girl, she's only been, she's 40 years old, and I encourage her, I worked there for her. And I, I used to talk to her about school, and I said, look, Fernanda, you need an education. Go to school. And I, and even the day I was there, I said, what are you doing? She said, I'm taking some courses. And I, I encourage any young people to better themselves. That was my, that was the same thing with my kids. You know, and I, I always helped them any, any way I could. My grandson's a doctor, and we helped him very hard. He just became a doctor a few months ago. I used to send money. I didn't I encouraged all my family to get an education. That was my father's priority. He just to better yourself. Not being, you know, not that those people weren't better at this or better, but he, he himself, he felt we should do it. You know, he oh, okay. yeah. Um, in terms of the community helping the new immigrants, do you think that help is is as strong as it was? No, it's stronger now. It is more more strong yeah. in terms of support. Yeah, because see, if you come to this country, right, and you you're, if you're, you're not most of the like the Brazilian people, they come over here, don't take any job, they go work in the hotels, anything, clean up. They just want the money because they need it, you know. And the Portuguese people are more proud. I find they're more proud. They they look for better things in life. The uh, continental Portuguese. Mm -hmm. oh, I see. So you see that on Charles Street, you mm -hmm. ever been going by that street? Charles Street, you know, you know where the church is? Up, yes. Up mm -hmm. there, that street, is not Um People come in, men come in there, they take this old house, and they all, all the men get together every night. They put new, one new plumbing, one did all these jobs, and they say Charles Street is beautiful compared to what it used to be because the Portuguese people are living there. They immigrate there, you know, around friends and family, and they do the houses over, and you never know. Even that Mr. Caulfield said one time, he said, until they came here, Charles Street was a dumb, not a dumb. He said, now they, they get together and they paint them, Martin, do you help me and I'll help you. Very aggressive. So some words that describe the Portuguese people are pride. That's pride. Uh, Ambition. 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 Mm -hmm. Not all of them. You know, you find a few that you know, not, but the majority their background. The Gorms there now. Him and his wife came over here and and um, she they went studied and they're teaching, you know. It depends on yourself. Right. Of course you have to be with yourself. Did you find a lot of the Portuguese back then? would come over to make money and have an opportunity and then go back to the country oh, sure. and retire. There are a few of those still now. Still today. And yeah. They come over here and they, and they try to work and make money and then they go back and they just back and, and they can live much mission. better. Right. But they can live much better over there. Yeah. After they retire. save their money yeah. Yeah. Right. and then they go there. Like uh, Fernanda's father, they got a house there that's fabulous. Right. You know, and it, they, their family, there's four or five of them, they're all work with that thing, that, that, that little pool, they're going to be, build a house there in Madeira or Castillo's, any place, yeah. Yeah, indoors, yeah. A common focus. Yeah. So, yeah. so people um, are still contemplating um, working until they make, they come here to make a certain amount of money mm -hmm. and then they're planning to go back home. Back home. I see. It's a lot easier to live there. Is it? I no, no. they plant the garden, they have the, you know, the vegetables, they have everything themselves. It's uh, country living. Yep. To them, it's happening. But they do, they can go back and live quite, quite comfortably, oh, like yeah. in a villa or something. A do, a do, yeah, five dollars here, like yeah. maybe twenty dollars there. And right. then they, you know, they're very economical people. They don't go out to eat right. and cook. They do everything they want, you know to make life easier for themselves. Now, did your father ever have that feeling of coming here and, you know, no, retiring? No, no, he, he just was happy made to America be his home. No, he was really mm -hmm. loved to be, he was an American person, you know. Mm -hmm. He was born there, but he became, he just loved the country. Mm -hmm. you know?
So did he become a citizen? Oh, yeah. He did. My mother he and my a citizen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did you find a lot of Portuguese becoming citizens? Or did they no, they are because they, uh, they have protect. some kind of rules there. Right. They have to have it. They, if you yeah. don't get the green card, sometimes you can't get a job. You have to have that card to become a citizen to get a better job. Right. Because I, I know working there at the maps there, a lot of the women went, they came over here, they couldn't speak English, but they can make a bed. Mm. You know what I mean? They go in the hotels and make beds and do the uh, household things. Mm. Well, Amina, when your mom was working and you were a toddler, who took care of you? A neighbor. Like they call a cousin, a, a neighbor. Yeah. Was that true in every family? Oh, yes. For instance, why was that neighbor not working? Was she over a certain age? Well, either she was sick or she her husband, they were older people, you know, so that was it. They couldn't go to work if they're 60 years old or 50, but they wouldn't mind kids. So, um, for the most part, every young mother works? Most of yes. And they, they have to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They have to. Uh, yeah. If you had met a young man that was not Portuguese, would, would your father have oh, encouraged that? He, he oh, wouldn't have been able to do that. You have so, to be Portuguese. So there were yeah. social boundaries. Yeah. You could be friendly to people, but you really couldn't make I could, No, I had to be. But now, then my brother married. Uh, as the years go by, they let up on certain things. You know what I mean? They, 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 they get more educated, and they feel different about that. When my brother married, I think she's Scottish, you see. Now, now, I was looking at my books there, when I was telling uh, Linda, yeah. I said, gee, my, two, my one son when I married Portuguese, the other one married Scottish, and my daughter married a Greek. So when we get together, we're all the same. Yeah. When your children were choosing their partners, were you involved in that process? No. Mm -hmm. yes, one of them were good girls, good people. I'd advise them, you know. I'd advise them and say, gee, I don't care for that girl. And so, but you can tell my son married a Scottish girl. And, um, you know, sometimes it's hard to, to go into a different, when you're, you're Portuguese, you're sort of bound by being Portuguese. And it's hard to, to accept a, another person, you know what I mean? But after you get to know them, they're, they're okay, you know? Now, does that mean that the, that the, that the person from another culture has to absorb and integrate into your culture, or that there's a compromise? There's usually a compromise. There's usually, a, you know, I, I wouldn't interfere. You know, they get married, they get married, that's their choice. I never interfere with any, anything in my case. I, my, my daughter married a Greek, a Greek doctor, a world general, and I wasn't too pleased, you know what I mean? It was a different culture altogether, but, you know. I, I had to accept it because that's what my daughter wanted. What can you do, right? And he was okay, you know, she was okay. They moved to New York and they have three children. They have uh, also two kinds of two um, pharmacists. My granddaughter's a pharmacist. She married a pharmacist. My, my daughter has a son that studied and just became a doctor. My other daughter is just going to school, my granddaughter. So to me, it was kind of strange at first. You have to accept it, you know what I mean? But they're the ones that are married, you have to accept that. Um, well, Amina, I noticed that you haven't felt very well lately, but you've been very healthy over the years, haven't you? Yeah. Because you are, um, how old? 84. You're 84, mm -hmm. and you look wonderful. Mm -hmm. even though you're not feeling mm -hmm. well. And I am stunned by the apparent um, sturdiness and the, mm -hmm. um, and the strength, especially of Portuguese women in this community. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you think that that has anything to do with the food that you've eaten? Well, I'd say it would, yeah. I'd say the majority of women or men, they neglect, they, they don't eat or they drink too much. I would say that, yeah. So what are the foods that are important to the Portuguese community? Soup. Soup, that's mm -hmm. so important. 
Some people eat soup all week long. What's in your soup? Well, like cabbage, you know, ham, pork, you know, any kind. Or like I say, kale, all that food. They, they're very, that's their main, main menu is soup. So those earthy foods all joined together. That's it. Mm -hmm. what keep you healthy. I believe that's true. Yeah, I've been eating out. I'm telling, it's funny because I was, when I was at the, the hospital, the girls used to say, don't look your age. What do you eat? And I said, I've been having oatmeal for 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> Every day? Yeah. Every, Every day. day. Every day. Every day I oatmeal. And one yeah. of the nurses, uh, she was so, <laughs> she said, oh, over two or three times, you sure you have oatmeal? I said, I have oatmeal every day. Oh. I mean, I don't know if that makes any difference. No, but, but that's a very uh, good start to a day. Is it this, is. Is this a particular kind of oatmeal? No, Quaker no. oats. Quaker oats. Oh. We're going to put you on television while there we you know. go. <laughs> See? Yeah. Yeah. Quaker oats, yeah. But that is, that's a good, and that's a meal that stays with you. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think it's But a, I, I it's think that's because I had um, hiatus trauma, trouble years ago. And uh, so I said to myself, I've got to think of something that I have to eat, whether I like it or not. I've been reading. I was reading about different things. I said, oh, I'm going to get oatmeal. And I've been eating it ever since. Yeah. Every morning. Yeah. A little juice. A glass of juice. Mm -hmm. um, this is a personal question, too. Um, I, you have lost your husband. When did that happen? Oh, 1983. 1983. Mm -hmm. And is it the general custom of people to remarry? No. No. I would see my children all out of town. I was a very... Uh, say lonesome, you know. I go to the dances with the girls, and and um, then he started approaching me, and I go dances, and he'd be there, or he'd take a dance, and, and uh, that's how I I think it was more because you're lonesome, you know. A nice See, when you're, you're in this condo, your neighbors are all by themselves. Right. They either work, you know what I mean. They're not associated. They're not like living in a house. You meet your neighbor. These mm -hmm. neighbors are all. I mean, I don't know, they, like the girl that's over here, her and her husband, they travel a lot, they have no children. That lady's in Florida. The other couple, they're sort of invalids, they hard time. And you move by yourself, like, you know, you have to find somebody to talk to, you know. And I used to go to dances with the girls, and that's how I met her. I used to, you know, dance. And you really removed yourself out of the Portuguese neighborhood. Yeah, he's I mean, Portuguese. He didn't, he didn't talk Portuguese. He was married to a French lady. Okay. And, um, but I come here, and now Sally's over there. Uh, Laura's here. It's about five Portuguese families. I noticed that on the mailbox. It's yeah. Just, the I girl over here, she's it. Silvera. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's single. She's a widow. Mm. But... Um, but they more or less stayed in one area. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I mean, yeah. even when you were raising your children, did you find that you stayed more in the Portuguese yeah, neighborhood? Yeah, so about the Portuguese community. Yeah. It yeah. was always better to be with the port. So I, I lived on Tyler Street, and yeah. they had that uh, house, boarding house. And then Mrs. Philant's mother used to mind my, my kids mm -hmm. because she was, she was a, like an invalid. She was an older woman, kind of stout. So she might mind my kids for me to go to work, yeah. you know, while I was there back on that. Do you think if you were still in just a primarily Portuguese neighborhood where you had friends constantly around that you may have been married? Mm -hmm. do you I don't think I would have remarried re because I was always, see, I like people. I like to talk to people. And you get lonesome in here, yeah. you know what I mean? You don't have anybody to talk to and you put your TV, that stuff to that. Because yeah. I watch more TV now since I've been home. Yeah. But I'm usually working. I'm always doing something. I go out. Yeah. I went out with the girls the other day. I mean, it's, it's a thing. So I went out with a, a girl that worked. I, I worked at the Con Fed Bank for years, six years or seven. After I retired, that's how I bought my house, place in uh, the Cape. I put all that money away, and I said, I'm going to buy something for my kids. And I bought that condo for no, another mm -hmm. Oh, Wilhelmina, mm. um, what do you do for volunteer work now? I know you've, you've been oh, very, very active. Oh, I'm a foster grandmother. I'm a foster mm -hmm. grandmother. Yeah. Uh, and you were working at the Massachusetts Alliance for Portuguese Speakers yes, for a while. Yes, I was there, yeah, six months. Mm -hmm. I've noticed that there are a lot of 
um, Portuguese ladies volunteering in the community. They work very hard, it seems to me. What do you think causes that? You mean you're talking about like the MAPS program and that stuff? The MAPS program, but people don't seem to sit around. They seem to be out doing things. Well, no, I, I don't. But if your daughter gets involved and she's a president or a vice president or a secretary, naturally her mother's going to go and help her when the runner dies. You know what I mean? That's the only solution. But they do work themselves. Some of those ladies work. Not today. I think like the, they used to went to Prince um, Prado. They used to work at the um, many then. Now there's a lot of jobs are gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they they settled by mind kept doing things for the church because they would get bored. All of their family involved in. See, my family's involved, so I guess that my mother's in there. Mm -hmm. and that's how they do it. Mm -hmm. See, I have, go to Holy Ghost Park. You know what that is? She, do you mm -hmm. know that? Yeah. yeah. And um, she, when it comes to a festival, she does women and goes till three, four in the morning. Mm -hmm. She's very dedicated, dedicated to church or anything. They're honest about it. I think we'll call this paper Soup Energy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because yeah, it's, it's so soup. amazing. The energy. It is. It is so helpful. And progressive. Some people, I, I remember I'm talking to a lady. Up, I lived on A Street for 50 years, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and uh, this lady says, "I brought my niece over here, and uh, I used to give her steaks and, and pork chops and linguine." She said, "You know what I want? All I want is a bowl of soup." Mm -hmm. you know, she was trying to break her feel by the custom today, you know, yeah. being beef eaters, you know, right. and she was she was doing that to, to her. She said, you know, Auntie, her auntie went, she said, all I want is a plate of soup. <laughs> mm. So she started making soup because she didn't want steak and pork chops. And all right. that well, I know bean soup is a favorite. I don't cook it. I was never shown how to cook it. To cook and what? Bean soup, you know, to, soup. to the soups. And um, I know when we visit Tony's Aunt Rachel, that was a very good thing in her house as well. She was Portuguese. and. Whatever meal we started off having, no matter what it was, the first thing that came out was bean soup. And my kids love it. I mean, I, I couldn't believe how they would devour it. I would look at them and go, oh my gosh. And they did. They truly loved it. And the important thing is, you know, she's getting along in years. And we're wondering who's going to continue to make the bean soup. You know, I said, yeah. my daughter, you better learn how to make it. Or you won't have it. It'll be something that'll be gone. But it's it is important. It's important. You know, it's the, the bean soup. It's, it's kind of, meal of we joke the about it a lot. It's a meal of the Portuguese people. Yeah. You to me, I feel it. that way. It's I love it. I, I like any kind of soup. Well, well, I love soups. And I mean, I think a lot of different cultures have their own soups and stuff. Yeah. Because it was cheaper to make their own week. But I, I've never seen, you know, just being in the family and meeting Tony's family, how important the beans are. Well, Lena, um, this, this wonderful interview is almost over, but I wonder if you have some good advice. I wonder if you have a few things that, that you would like people to know about the Portuguese community, especially the young people. The first thing I tell you is that I think our people are be very honest. They bring their families to be very, very honest. That's one of the things. They're not going to church as much. I couldn't say that they, they push their children to go to church because today they kind of let go a little bit and, and the people are not going to church. But they are honest. That's, that's the top word. You know? And hard working. And hard working. They're really ambitious. And and so, uh, what would you say to the, the new babies who are someday going to see this tape? The new Portuguese babies that are being born today, what do you want them to hear you say? Well, I'd say a lot of the families need a lot of love to support themselves. They keep loving their family, honesty. And that is the best thing they can think of in their own life. Love brings families together. It brings 
even, I mean, you can make an enemy out of, you know, somebody that you don't like, but if you try to love a person, that's going to go all the way. You should love people. It seems to be true in Portuguese community. Yeah. There's a lot of warmth here. Yeah, warmth. Yeah. And there's warmth for outside. A lot of caring, caring, caring. Mm -hmm. A lot of people caring. You know, they, they want to help other people, you know. And, and that's their way. That's, that's the way I think they're brought up. But their children might not be that way if they grow. You know what I mean? But love keeps the family together. It keeps everyone together. Because you show love. Now, I, I know, I've been set nine years in the school department. And I'm telling you, I, I have, I have made a scrapbook of all the children that sent me cards. They made their own cards. You know, their own thing, I can show you. They made all those cards themselves. And they sent a set of paper, an eight by 10 paper, each one. And I, I cherished that. I thought that was wonderful. Yeah. Now, I have it, I put it in a, a binding book, a picture book uh, that they have, and I thought it was, it was so, of course the teacher had a lot to do with it, but I felt so good, I felt loved. Right. And I said, gee, my eye is pounding, I have, I went to the pain clinic, I did all these things, and look at these it's people little, are little, really yeah. nice to me, you know, and it makes you forget, you yeah. know. Yeah. Do you feel your parents, did they display love, did they hold yes. you and hug you and kiss you yeah. and... Uh, every Sunday we had to go together. We had to go for a ride together. My father take us for a ride. We go eat a little mm -hmm. bit, you know, something. Then, you know, they always were sort of were bound by family and love. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and education. And education. That's, that's, a good, that's a good one. You pounded that in. That's a good <laughs> one. No, but that it is. didn't actually. Uh, like my son was going out with a. This is just a personal thing. My son was going out with this Irish girl. He worked, he went to the BU in Boston, right? And at that time I had two, I had two kids going to college. And um, he met this girl, I know her name was Sullivan, and she, he used to come here for dinner, we'd bring her on Sunday. And then she got upset and she said, I want you to come Wednesday, I want you to come Sunday, any day of the week. Well, he was working part time in a drugstore, okay? And uh, the money wasn't that great. And I had kids in college, I had my other two. And I said, look, and he said, she wants me to come on Wednesday. He used to bring me his clothes to wash and all that. And I said, gee, I said, Belle, I don't know. Well, if she wants you to do that and then she wants you to forget education, you know, it's not that important. I said, you've got to think of yourself. You'll be better off if you go to school, educate yourself, make something, make more money, then you can keep her if she's not satisfied with one day a week. And <clears throat> first thing you know, a couple of weeks went by, she didn't come. Mary Sullivan, I think it was Mary Sullivan. She didn't come. I said, what happened to Belle? Bell? Mary hasn't come. He says, well, he, he tears that crying now. He says, well, she wants me to come two or three times a week, and I can't afford it. And I said, ma, he says, you know, I used to give him $25 a week, right? And that was a lot to me, you know. It was a big deal. And for him to treat her, and then on Sunday, <coughs> they bring her up to the house. So <coughs> he said, well, he said, I dropped her. He said, because she wanted, she wanted a lot of things I couldn't give up. So he stopped, and he did well. He did, he, now he's done. Um, and he felt bad, because I was thinking, I'm sure he really loved her. But he, he thought of what I said, and he left, kept on an education, and he became, he, now he's a consultant. So, I mean. I don't know, <clears throat> that's it. I said, well, if she doesn't want you to be educated, how can you take care of her? You know what I mean? I said, you need more money. Mm -hmm. So he dropped her off and, and he became okay. You know, he was all right. After two months, he forgot. He got somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't actually true love, I don't think. But it's just, I don't know, we just talk about it. We never argued. Never in my family. We and my father, don't you dare slam the door, he'd say. That's not good. He didn't, he didn't, you know, tell us little things that he didn't like, and we just followed it through. And we didn't like it sometimes, but we did it. <laughs> <laughs> like eating soup, you know, I didn't like the, the stems of the kale. Right. And I'd push them aside, you know. And uh, so I said, I'm all done. Said, no, you're not. And I said, why? Why, Dad? I don't want that. You're not. Eat it. 
I see. So you, um, your maiden name was, was late? That's right. Mm -hmm. I see. I didn't ask you that before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, late, M-E-I-T-E. Mm -hmm. I got on my passport. Well, mm -hmm. late Machado. Govea Machado, actually, but late Machado. What, then, um, was the occupation of your mother's father? He was a farmer. And your father's father? I believe he was the same. That's what they did, farm. But my mother's father also made tiles that they used to form out of some sort of clay that grows there, that it, it's in the ground, and then they put them out in the sun to bake, and they could make roofs from them. Now, that was my mother's father. And I remember her saying they laid out the tiles in the hot sun to bake. Did they also build buildings with it, or was it only a roofing I tile? I think it was mostly roofing. That's what she told me. Uh, how old uh, were your mother and father when they came to America? My mother was 17. My father was almost 19. He was 18 when he went to Brazil first. And he stayed there a few months, and then he came to the United States. And did they know each other? Yes, they had gone to school together. Oh, they went, oh, did they went to school. And were they betrothed before they came to America? I, I think they had an understanding. It was like uh, when we get settled and we have some money, we're going to get married. So she came and lived with her sister who had come years before. I had a nun that had come years before. Her sister, and she lived with her until she got married. Um, and, and how old was that girl when she came to America? And she was 15, and she was eight years older than my mother. So do you think, did, do you, was it difficult for your mother to leave her parents behind? I think it was very hard. I think she missed them all her life. But never went back. No. But she also said that, of course, they were elderly. And when they died, she said she had no reason to go back, that her family was in the U.S. So when they passed away, she did not go back even for the funeral? No, no. I don't think they could afford it. Really, I don't think they could afford the passage. By then, she had one child, who was my sister, Wilhelmina. And I think things were bad. They were in the mills, and I think it was difficult to put any money together. So, but they didn't go back. Um, so I'm just wondering, it seems to me that most of the young people from the islands um, emigrated mm -hmm. to the United States. So was that a common understanding that when everybody yeah. gets to be 60, yeah. Yeah, to make a living, living they, to make a better living than they could make there? Because it was a small island and it wasn't, there were very few jobs, mm -hmm. you know, except farming and fishing. And that's about the only thing they could do. Do you think when they left Portugal that they had the intention of returning at some time? Oh, my parents never did. No, no they didn't. Um, and when they got here, uh, your mother lived, I guess, with her sister. Because she got married, and my father lived with his brother. Were these boarding houses? Yes, they all had rooms in a very large home, and they rented a room until they got a place of their own. So, um, was this particular boarding house um, filled with Portuguese people? Yes. Yeah. Not too many other ethnic groups in there? No. I think they lived in the same neighborhood, though. I think there were other nationalities in the same neighborhood. But uh, they. Naturally, they didn't know the English language, so that they had to center around the church, St. Anthony's Church in Rome. And that's where Portuguese was spoken. Do you know how long they were here before they got married? Um, my mother was 19 and he was 20. Yes, they got married in 1913, July 19th, 1913. Now, I understand that, that um, that the Portuguese families are very protective of their daughters. So when those young women came to America uh, alone, then what kind of supervision did they have to have? 
Well, they had, like, my, my mother's sister was married, so she moved in with them, and they had a little girl, and my mother used to work all day in the mill and come home, and she stayed with the little girl when the, her sister had to work. So they were very family-oriented. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, and um, the entertainment of the family circled in this family as others around the church, I assume. Mm -hmm. Did you remember what mill she worked in? She told me. The Massachusetts, the Appleton. New Market. Well, the New Market was later on, yeah. but uh, the Massachusetts was the one on Bridge Street in Lowell. They, the apartments now mm -hmm. on Bridge Street mm -hmm. near the, uh, uh, just before you go over the bridge, there's a, all brick, and that she worked there. She also worked in the Appleton Mills, and there was a one a Lancet also. But I think that was later. What did she do in those mills? Well, she became a weaver. At first she started uh, doing just, well, beginning work, like cleaning the bobbins and stuff like that. And then she learned how to weave. Mm -hmm. And your father, what was his work? Well, he started weaving and then he became a loom fixer. He fixed the looms. And that was his livelihood all his life, the rest of his life. So they both stayed in the mills mm -hmm. and worked. I know your mother worked all those years. Not all those years, no. She came home uh, when she had me, which was about 11 years after she had this one, mm -hmm. the oldest one. And she came home and stayed in, stayed mm -hmm. home and with the three of us. There's two others besides. Now, w was one of the reasons for that that, that your father uh, made a little more money than it That's was right. possible for her to do that? Well, he used to have two or three jobs. And uh, he could also set up looms and things, so he had plenty of work. And he, they did get paid more than weavers. He, had, he was a musician. He had a band later on. Well, later on, he was a part-time musician, so he did play in the bands and stuff, and they paid. Music was very important in this community, wasn't oh, it? Oh, yes. In our family, it is. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, I know that almost everyone has mentioned music. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the men. Well, I, I think they were settled on their church and the bands, mm -hmm. the Portuguese bands. Mm -hmm. Did she? Uh, did Did your mother or father mention the type of voyage that they had? I remember all my mother ever said about it was she was sick all the way coming across. Coming she didn't really like to talk about it much, to tell you the truth. But I know she arrived in November of 1911. I remember she told me that. But she said she was motion sickness all the way. She didn't eat anything. And they kept telling her, the people that were with her, that if she ate, she would feel better. But she said whenever she ate, she threw it up. So she couldn't. So she was very glad to get on land. That's what she told me. Uh, did, did you ever hear her describe the supervisors or the administrators in the mills, how do you think they were treated? I think because she didn't understand the language. It was very hard sometimes for them to understand directions or stuff like that. But she knew she had to work in order to save money to get married. So I think they put up with an awful lot. And she was a very quiet person who probably could take it and cry by herself. People used to complain, but she never said much about it because she said the only way to make any money is to go to work every day. So when they had um, some of the labor uprisings, do you think that your mother and father participated in those? I don't think so. They never mentioned that to me. Because by then, I was born and my mother was home with me. And my father, what I remember is if he got three days work in one mill, he would go to another mill and he would get three more days work. So he always seemed to work mm -hmm. because he was able to do, because he learned that trade, that was something he could, he could do and he did that till he was retired. Now how many children were in your family? Four. It was my sister Wilhelmina, 
and then 11 and a half years later was me. And then I have a sister three years younger and a brother that's seven years younger than me. I wonder, um, two things. Do you remember the kind of um, family ambiance that you had? In other words, what was the understanding of discipline in this house? Um, I think my mother was the type that she was quiet but firm, and you knew. And she always took care of our discipline. She wasn't the type that said, wait till your father gets home. I used to hear that in other children's homes when I visited, wait till your father gets home. My mother wasn't like that. Whatever she she corrected us on, it stayed there. She never tattled on you. And I remember thinking that was wonderful because some kids would say, oh, my mother tells my father everything and then I get punished. But she didn't. She took care of it in her own way. So there, so there was a lot of trust. I think so. And when we came home from, we knew we had to come straight home from school. And we knew that, because she was there. She was waiting for us. Your brother was the youngest child. Um, did your father have any more occasion to discipline him than you? Uh, I, don't, I don't think so. My father was the type, was, he was kind of an understanding person. And my brother was a very happy child who could always make you laugh. Like even at the table, I can remember sitting, my mother would put him on one side of the table and my sister Helen and I on the other. And he would make us laugh. And we'd, we'd be the ones that spilled our milk. But I mean, he could make you laugh just by the way he acted, you know? And he was kind of like, He's got a sense of humor. Yeah, and he's very gregarious. And even as a child, if he fell and people laughed, he'd fall again because he didn't mind people laughing at him. That's the type of child he was. And he grew up that way. So you, know? you were a very comfortable, oh, it was trusting group. And your mother and father encouraged you all to be the things that, that you were good at, I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, my brother became a musician early. My father taught him. And I remember when he was little, my father gave him a trumpet. And when he'd blow it, he used to say, my ears hurt. And then my father would say, well, when your ears stop hurting, you come back again, and we'll try it again. And then when he started, now my brother never gave up music. <laughs> he, that's his vocation now. Well, he teaches music. Yes, he does. Did your mother ever express, your mother or father express any discomfort about living in um, an, the ethnic city of Lowell, another, the multi-ethnic city? In other words, were there ever any problems in your memory uh, with other ethnic groups? You see, when the mills closed in Lowell, things got bad in Lowell, the textiles. My father went to Manchester, New Hampshire to work. The Amiski mills were a big chain of textiles, the largest ones in the Northeast, I think. And so it was just my sister Wilhelmina and I. I was three. And my mother really didn't like the idea of my father being in one city and us being in Lowell. So she agreed to move to Manchester, New Hampshire. And we lived in housing that was subsidized by the Amiskeet Mills. And we lived there. And when my mother came to Manchester, she couldn't speak a word of English, but she, we moved into a place that was a three-family brick building. And there was a French lady that lived downstairs and another Portuguese lady that lived on the first floor and an Irish person that lived across the way. My mother learned English. And, in fact, I, don't, I think she enjoyed it. And I think because she, she never really wanted to go back and live in the ethnic place again with, where she didn't, couldn't understand except her own language. She enjoyed it in Manchester. She enjoyed moving out and assimilating with other people. I think she did. And she had very good friends. And uh, we stayed there until the Amiskeed Mills closed. Do you remember mm -hmm. when that was? And then, because yeah, I got married in um, 34. No, that was still gone after that. Yeah. 
Yeah. And uh, I think then, in 1940. Then we moved back to yeah. Lowell. Yeah, 1940. And uh, we lived up uh, up a Gorham Street, which was all nationalities. In fact, they called it Sweet Village. Mm -hmm. But uh, there were a lot of Portuguese there and Irish and Swedish people when we lived up there. That was the rest of my childhood. And your brother, as a young man, does not describe any discomforts with other ethnic groups? No, he doesn't. No, well, see, he was the youngest. And so when we moved back to Lowell, he was born in Manchester, but when we moved back to Lowell, he was only three or four years old. So his whole school, schooling was amongst other children, no, not Portuguese children. They were everywhere. Did you finish high school? Yes. Yeah, and I went to business college. And and that business college was named? Bradshaw Business School. Where? In Lowell. Mm -hmm. And your sister and brother? Um, my sister went to hairdressing school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, my brother went to Lowell State. He became a music teacher. Mm -hmm. So, um, so your parents really felt that education was important and encouraged you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Even yeah. at that early time in our country, to uh, yeah, they them. they came over here with the encourage to be somebody to be better than a mill worker. Yeah. And they went right into that routine and they saw others looking better. But see, so both my parents when they came, they had been educated in the old country. Some mm -hmm. people had hadn't gone to school. But the two of them had gone to school because their parents made them go to school. Mm -hmm. So that when they came here, my father learned English faster because he was out in the world, working world. Mm -hmm. But when we moved to Manchester, New Hampshire, my mother was forced to learn. And I started kindergarten at four. So when I come home, my mother would ask me my homework and all, all the things. She used to supervise my spelling words. She learned by doing my her, my homework. So she was in school with you, essentially. Exactly. She went right through so that if you met my parents, they both spoke very good English because they, well, they they were just easy to get along with, mm -hmm. you know, so that they just, they fit. In fact, when we moved from Manchester to Lowell, it was the saddest day of my mother's life. I think she must have cried like a month after she missed her neighbors. We used to come back and visit them. I do wait to come back. Do you know what Amy... Um, She introduced herself at the party yesterday. She said, I went out with your sister, not you. Your sister, Amira Helen. She went out with she, she was the same age as her and went to school. Mm -hmm. Not my child. And she introduced herself yesterday. She said, I went out, I was a very close friend of Helen. She said, I don't remember Mary or you, but then when she heard me talk in Portuguese, she came up and introduced herself this time. I don't know anything. Yeah. She said she was a friend of Helen. Well, she was three years behind, so yeah. that when I went into junior high school, Helen was still in grammar school, yeah. and then when I went to high school, Helen joined junior high so mm -hmm. that I was three years ahead of her. Yeah. So maybe I missed one yeah. of her friends, but I don't know. Really They're about Helen's age. Yeah. She was born kind of nice looking girl. Well she knew but the minute she heard I was talking to Al Freitas and she said, Oh, I heard you say you were Lena Lake. She said, Oh shit, I went out with the Helen Lake. Um excuse me, Mary, yeah. what was your date of birth? October fifth, nineteen twenty five. And your sister, how long is it? Is November 4th, 1928. And your brother, whose name is? John. John. March 31st, 1933. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? 33. He was born the year before you got married. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was a little tough when I got married. Well, I, only I had one, and then they were like, they were... Uh, yeah, the, my brother and her two kids were more closer in age than we were. Yeah, I have pictures here of them. Do you have, um, I believe it's time for you to be finished, do you have a thought 
uh, about immigration today and multilingualism? Well, see, my dad uh, had a lot of nieces and nephews that were in the old country and Brazil, and they came to visit him. And some of them settled in Lowell, so that I was introduced to them, and they needed an awful lot of help because they came with the same problems, not knowing the language. My father helped them as much as he could. And then he had me helping them with their telephone calls and then uh, getting them tenements to live in and getting water turned on when they lived in places. This was years later, and there were places that were not heated, no hot water down on Union Street. And so I was on the phone all the time talking to real estate people that I never knew to get help for these cousins of mine. And, and how do you feel about all of that today, about the new immigrants? Well, I think they're, it's a little easier for them now because there is help. There is help, like the International Institute used to help them, you know, get places to live and, and encourage the education for their kids. In the MAPS program now, that's the latest. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if, if the early immigrants and the and the children of the early immigrants feel resentment or 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 if they have words of wisdom for because it just seems to me that you all worked very hard and watched your parents work very hard with no complaints and seemed to do very well. What I think now is I know when my cousins came that. I felt bad for them. Some of them had three and four little kids. And I remember taking them to their first day of school because their parents couldn't explain and, you know, sign the cards and things. And what I found was one of them had five children. And I took the three youngest to a grammar school in Lowell on Ames Street. I think it was the Ames Street School down off Child Street. It was around there. There was a little school there. And I took the three little ones in. And they were happy. They were oblivious. They didn't know the language, but they went to kindergarten, a couple of them. And they acted with the little, other little kids just like they could speak. And the other kids accepted them. There was no uh, stigma or anything with the little kids. What year yeah, was that? This was... Um, It was the early 50s, I think. Mm -hmm. And when I, those little kids went in, and the teachers were so nice, and they all sat down, and they were all happy. They were all talking to each other. My two little cousins were talking Portuguese, and the other two little kids were just talking English, and they were all talking and laughing and giggling. And I said, they're accepted. They're all little kids, and the teacher was wonderful. Then I had to take the other two to a school on the Corman, the Edith Norris Rogers School. They were teenagers. They were like 15 and 16 or 14 and 15. That's where I saw the other kids looking at them and pointing a finger at them and saying, look at the way they're dressed. And they were dressed nicely. They had summer clothes on and sandals, but that's what people were wearing in the summer. But these kids had started the fall wardrobe, the American kids. And that's the only time I noticed I, when I left, I felt bad for them because the two little girls, 14 and 15, when I turned around to leave and the principal said he'd take care of them, he was very nice to them, they looked at me like they wanted me to stay. And I felt bad for those two older ones. Not the little ones. The little ones, they didn't know what was happening. They were just happy to see crayons and coloring books. But those two, I always felt bad. And both of those just finished how old do they have to go? 16 and they can go to work? Those two never continue. Um, they didn't. Well, Mary, I, I would like to talk to you forever, but um, you're, you've been, it's 20 minutes of, and I assume you need to be back to Westford by 2? Mm -hmm. 3? By 3. Oh, yeah. what happened to this clock? <laughs> I said, we said it last night to be the right time, and now it's the wrong time. Maybe it has to be cleaned up. Maybe. I can't do it. So it's about 20 minutes to 3. Mm -hmm. 
work. Um, and you know what? There's, you know what I've realized? I'm, I'm going to make a form, which would be sort of like a survey of dates and times, if nobody minds, and, and have you fill those out, which I don't have today, obviously. I haven't filled them out yet. But as I talk to everybody, I realize that there's little numbers that I don't know. For instance, the age that people were when they started school and when they ended school and the college that they went to and, and all of that. And some of those are in here. And as I hear you girls especially talk about the way you were encouraged to be educated, I realize that there's a, a lot of information that I haven't asked other people because sometimes you, you're just expecting it to fit in and it hasn't come yet. But it would be a very nice frame if each person's progress um, could be put in a, in a sort of but survey think, form. But don't you think that if you go and ask everybody, now to me, we don't mind, but some of them, they have personal reasons for not giving any close information as to their age, to a lot of things, because a lot of them have, you know, things in their, in their past they don't want people to know. So far, so far everybody's been very, very cooperative. Yeah. But you're going to find some, but they might I don't give you have dates, but they, they might give you dates, but it's more like a, a date they want to, say, put a date down. Not oh, might day. not be the real one? The real one. Oh, really? Oh. I mean, I, I don't know what to do. I, I know, like, I told you to go to Sally, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then there was the other one. Mm -hmm. The, the Spraders, I met them today. And some people, they want to keep that as a secret. I mean, personal. Well, thing. I know if, if, I, if I notice, obviously, they don't have to write in the line where they don't want it, you know. But it's helpful in the narration that I'll be doing to say that, the parents, your parents, for instance, and I would give their name, had four children born such and such a time, and they got married. Because I'm going to have to make comparisons of, of for instance, there are a lot of those folks who, um, who started working the minute they were 16, and the money was expected to go back oh, into yeah. the family. I did. I started working when I was 14. Yeah. yeah. And, and those are the things that, that we're trying to say, that we're, we're trying to make a picture that's reasonably understandable because if we're saying things that everybody's doing now, there isn't going to be any, there wouldn't be any comparison between now and then. And there wouldn't be any, there's, there's a big difference in, I'll be interested to hear Manuel today because um, there seems to be a big difference between the way the women, the things remember, the way the women remember compared to the way the men remember. So, if you can think of two or three more men, it would be very helpful because I only have three. And it would be good to have two. I know my three. husband came here when he was 14 or 15. His name was my family. And he went to his brother's house in his bedroom. And he was there 55 years. He never wanted to go back. There was such poverty because he was one of eight mm -hmm. children mm -hmm. that they had to start working in, 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 the, in the ground. There was no jobs. So he came over here, his brother came first, and then he came, and he didn't want to go back. Fifty-five years he didn't want to. He said, That's, he said that had poor memories. I, I suffered. Suffered because there was a large family. They mm -hmm. couldn't feed them as much, you know. They couldn't feed them. They said, go out, go to America, go to America. That's all they say. Go to America, you, you get rich over there. That was the impression that they gave. Mm -hmm. And my husband said, I never want to go back. Mm -hmm. And the only reason we went back was, I had my children. I wanted them to see where he was born in Madeira. I'm going next month, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he, he, you know, I wanted my kids to see where the father was born. He went with us, and what a big transformation! The people are educated. Like he'd say, "Oh well, I'm glad that you speak Portuguese," but he did too. And he said, "Well, look at there. They all speak English." Really? No, they don't speak because English. Because maybe they will come here and draw back. A lot no, of them don't please cool. don't feel like you have to be polite if you need to leave. <laughs> no, it's just that sometimes by the time I get home, the school buses, you go through, ch I go through Chelmsford and Westford, and you get behind school buses mm -hmm. and, and you take like 20 extra minutes on the bus, yeah. so that I think I will try to go home. Yeah.